works our joint work with uh, Matteo Grotzi from Milan, Antonio Fernandez from Madrid, but originally from Granada. Then Angela Pistoia from Rome, she will be here next week. And uh, then Sergio Cruz from Granada, so it would be a very Granaino talk. <laughs> So the starting point of this work is a very classical problem between analysis and geometry, which is the perception of uh, curvature, the perception of Gaussian curvature on a surface, uh, which is a very studied problem. I'm, I guess I will not be the only one speaking about these type of problems here in these two weeks. Uh, so we have a, a surface, we have a given function k on the surface sigma. Here everything is smooth. We don't care much about regularity. And we want to deform sigma conformally in such a way that this function k is at each point the um, Gaussian curvature of the new matrix. So the product of the two um, principal curvatures. This is, um, okay, this is the, what I wrote here is the geometric is a geometric problem in principle, but then actually it's also a PD problem. There is an equivalent PD formulation, which is this one, is a so-called Liouville type PPD. So it has um, the Laplacian in the um, in the linear term. In the nonlinear term, we have the exponential, and then we have both the old curvature kg and the new curvature k we want to prescribe. Uh, so the geometric information is uh, in k and kg. So this is, okay, this is the case of surfaces without boundary. Um, and this is a very well studied problem. If we consider a surface with boundary, then uh, there is a natural, generalization which is um, kind of less studied we have a uh, boundary so of course we need some say boundary condition we need to um, prescribe some information on the boundary and we prescribe geodesic curvature so okay we still want we still have k defined on the interior of sigma we want k to be the gaussian curvature of a new metric and then on, on the boundary, we prescribe a, a new curvature, a new function h, which we want to be the geodesic curvature. So basically, the curvature of the of the boundary, which is the curve, but projected on the um, tangent plane. Again, we have a PD. We have an equivalent formulation in terms of PD. In the interior, of course, we have the same. You will type equation because in the interior we are prescribing the same. In the boundary, we have um, a kind of interesting thing, which is a boundary condition, but it is of a nonlinear type. So it is a sort of a couple of two nonlinear equation. The Liouville equation at the interior and uh, nonlinear normal condition of, of the type normal derivative equal some exponential of u. So again, the exponential and again the curve the both the new and the old curvature appearing at the um, in the equation in the equation. Okay. So this is the case of um surface with boundary. In particular, we will consider, okay, um, simple case uh, from the point of view of the um, starting surfaces, which is the, everything okay? Go ahead, sorry. Okay, I, not... I will ignore you. I so, <laughs> okay, so uh, we will consider the case of sigma equal the half plane. 
So sigma is the half plane. Uh, the boundary is a straight line, of course. We want to, um, this is not a compact manifold, of a compact surface, of course. So we need also to prescribe something, uh, some condition at infinity. We want uh, to prescribe something which we, which will be finite area and of the new metric and finite length of the new metric. So uh, we will have extra condition of this type. Integral of uh, both curvature, which covers, which correspond geometrically to the total area and total length, we, we will be finite. Of course, here since everything is flat, we only have k and h because what I call the kg initially is identically zero. So this is the problem we will consider with curvatures k and h. The um, of course. The starting point, say, principle, the easiest point is K and NH constants. And this has been completely solved. Solutions have been classified. They have um, also already 20 years ago. Uh, they have this explicit form. They are the so-called bubble, so they are a logarithmic behavior at infinity they depend uh, on of course on k and h of k0 and h0 here um, k0 can be supposed to be either zero or plus or minus one up, up to multiplying by a constant and uh, the family depends on two parameter mu and psi mu is a positive parameter corresponding to the uh, in invariance by scaling and psi corresponding to the um, invariance by translations. So it's a two parameter family. Um, here, okay, you can see that we, we have the logarithm of this guy. So everything must be well defined on the upper half, half plane. Uh, so we will need some condition. So um, basically, if we put if we prescribe positive curvature in the interior, then the boundary curvature can be anything. If the mm, interior curvature we prescribe is zero or is negative, we have a lower bound on uh, the, the boundary curvature. If the mm, interior curvature is zero, the, the boundary curvature must be positive. If the interior curvature is, is negative, the boundary curvature must be upper a certain threshold to compensate this fact. So, uh, constant curvature, everything is done. What we do is almost constant curvature. So, we uh, want cur curvature in, in the form k0 plus epsilon k, h0 plus epsilon h. And we want mm, of course, with h and k not constant, and we want uh, for small epsilon to have some uh, non-trivial non solutions, which, as epsilon goes to zero, will um, uh, converge, will bifurcate from some of the bubbles we uh, I introduced before, <laughs> and this is a uh, an argument uh, already. Um, used for other type of um, critical geometric problems in the whole space. So problems in R2 uh, with, with the exponential linearities and problems in, in Rn with n greater or equal than 3 with uh, power type with critical power nonlinearity. Uh, we will now adapt these arguments from the, the case of uh, Boundary with also a boundary curvature. <laughs> so we want uh, solutions converging for small epsilon to the bubble. So we look for solutions in the form bubble for some mu psi, which will, will, will be determined, plus our, our, our remainder phi, which will be small. So u is explicit, is one I wrote before. So 
is equivalent, of course, to find the psi, to find phi. And phi will be found using a Yavron Smith reduction, which is a rather powerful and widely used tool for this type of problems in geometric analysis. So basically, uh, basically it's a generalization of uh, implicit function theorem. So if the linear rise operator is invertible, phi can be found easily. Otherwise, uh, we invert, we, we can invert the linear rise operator on the orthogonal to the kernel. And then to find a true solution, we need to impose orthogonality with respect to the linear rise operator. So the linear operator is um, is made by solution of this problem, um, this linear problem. Um, solutions to this linear problem are again explicit. They will be found in they were found in a recent paper with a big contribution from the Department of Granada. Uh, the solution of the, the linearized operator are two two dimensional, and they correspond to the, the two generator z one and z two, and so they, they correspond to the derivative of the, the function u in the direction of mu and of psi. So I can so uh, what do I mean? I can see the bubble u. As a function of, of the parameters mu and psi, and I derive and I find this function. And th these are exactly the uh, the generators of the kernel. This is not uh, this is not. I mean, there is a reason for this, which is the fact that um, which is the invariance by translation and by dilation, which will naturally give uh, two uh, direction in the kernel. The, the point is there are only these two generators and nothing more. So uh, the point is um, there is no, um, it is not, the kernel is not degenerate. So we have two parameters, mu and psi, which are to be found. I, uh, I didn't specify, but we, need to find what is the bubble we want this bifurcation from. Uh, so what we'll do is to find mu and psi giving orthogonality with respect to z1 and z2. This is what we'll do. Um, now, okay, now we we'll focus with one particular case, which is the case k equals zero. So basically we are, per we are prescribing a flat curvature in the interior and uh, non-trivial constant uh, curvature in the boundary. This has a strong uh, um, relation with the fractional operators, non-local operators. Why? Because um, one of the one of the equivalent formulation of the half Laplacian is just the directly to Neumann formulation. So the um, since here in the interior, we have just the homogeneous Laplace equation, the only uh, non-trivial non-linear term is in the boundary. This is equivalent to um, considering an equation on the real line, on the boundary node of the hot plane, with the half Laplacian. So the problem we, we consider is this one, minus half Laplacian of u, equal h x of u. So a fractional, you will type e equation. The fractional version of the um, Liouville equation in the plane. And this is the, uh, the, the first result, the first paper we talk about is about this particular problem. Uh, this is also particularly interesting is the, this problem because it has application not only in the geometric problem, but also in, uh, in mathematical physics in some type of uh, uh, generalized uh, nonlinear shading. 
So, so of course, this was since we look for uh, non-constant curvature here. Big, big H is one plus epsilon small h, so we will apply the Lyapunov field reduction to this problem. And after some computation, we find that uh, so we need that um, orthogonal condition with respect to the kernel, which will produce uh, these perturbative solutions, is equivalent to uh, the couple mu psi being a critical point of uh, this function that, that defined as an integral. So we have this integral depending on mu and on psi, and we want to find critical points of this guy. How do we find critical points? We use the de um, the Dirichlet degree. We use a, a degree argument. So first of all, we need some technical assumption to uh, to be in position to apply the um, degree argument, which is basically okay. Some regularity and um, behavior at infinity because of course the degree is convenient and powerful in closed um, manifold in non-compact in the non-compact setting uh, there can be some troubles but um, as, but we so with h3 and h5 we, we exclude the uh, Mm, critical points at infinity. Uh, H4 is just to make sure that H, the integral in H5 makes sense. And in, with H2, we exclude the, uh, as already, we exclude the um, accumulation of critical points and the degeneracy in the sense of the half of H, which will play a major role, as we will see in a moment. Uh, okay. How do we compute the degree of a map? Uh, again, this is a non-compact uh, manifold, so um, it's not. It has a boundary and it is not compact. So we use. So we basically use a, a trick, which is the um, even extension. So if if we had a function defined on the whole plane instead of that on a half plane, would be better because there will be no boundary issues. How do we do? We, we just extend evenly. We just reflect with respect to the boundary, to the horizontal line, u equals zero. So from gamma, we go to gamma tilde, which is we have upper half plane gamma, lower half plane gamma with mu re reflected, and in our horizontal line, uh, just h. Now, mm, computing the degree of this map is easier because uh, we don't have boundary issues. The degree of this map will, will, will take account of the critical point of h at, uh, at level zero. At, pure, at positive mu, it will take account of the uh, critical points of gamma, of course. And also at the negative mu, it will take account again of, of critical points of, of, of gamma. So they will be counted twice. Okay, of course, I need to verify that I'm not cheating because I am, okay, in principle, I could be attaching things which do not fit together, which are not continuous. Continue. So uh, I need to verify that the gluing is uh, admissible and to this purpose we have the, a crucial expansion which says that yes it's admissible so in the sense that as mu goes to zero gamma so also gamma tilde tends to h so the map is continuous and i also have a, a first thought so this is the zero order term and then there is the first order term which depends on precisely on the half log relation of uh, h so um i can so okay here we have the absolute value which is not differentiable but up to a dilation uh, i can differentiate and i can see um what is the behavior 
not only of gamma, not only of gamma tilde, but of its critical points at level zero. Because of course, the at, at level zero, gamma tilde coincides with H, so the um, the critical points will be the critical points of H, but the index could change because on the vertical direction, I could have either a maximum or a minimum. So maximum could stay maximum, maxima could stay maxima or could become saddles in dependence of this sign. And, of, and for the same reason, minima could, could stay minima or could become saddle. Uh, so to sum up, we have a formula for the degree, which uh, is, the, is this guy here. 1 minus big M plus small m. Big M and small m count the, the, the local maxima and the local minima of H, but only the ones with positive half Laplace. The other ones cancel out, so do not create any rule. So we, so we get this result in the... Um, in a forthcoming paper with uh, uh, Cosi Fernandez and Pistoia. So if this guy here is not is different from zero, so if big M minus small m is different from one, the degree is not zero, I have a critical point of uh, gamma which produces a solution. Now, can we say, so we have uh, at least one solution where the degree is not trivial. Now, can we say something more? Uh, well, when do things, uh, what, what is the bad case? When, well, when H is even a monoton decreasing, we only have one maximum point at zero, which is an absolute value. No minima, so big M is zero, small M, big M is one, small M is zero. So we have no solution. And this is actually consistent with uh, another recent result by uh, Andrew Lenzman and Maria Allen, who is a PhD student of his, who say that the um, fractional nivel equation has uh, a, a unique solution when H is even and decreasing plus some extra regularity and, and decay assumption. So, um, we do not find uh, any extra solution other than the bubble, so this is consistent. Uh, moreover, we can say by, well, easily by integrating by parts, that a necessary condition to get perturbative solutions, so in our form, is that this integral equals zero. So H prime must change somehow monotonicity. So there will be some, some chain of monotonicity will be uh, necessary to get our solutions. Now, can we say something more about critical points? The degree gives um, existence of solutions, but in general, it doesn't give it doesn't give any uh, complete information. But here, in this case, we can say something more because. Uh, the function gamma is actually harmonic because it is the um, it, it is actually the convolution between H and um, the Poisson kernel on half space. So gamma is uh, is just the harmonic extension of H to the upper half plane. So it is harmonic. We have an harmonic solutions on the plane harmonic harmonic function do not have any maxima or minima so any critical point is a saddle and saddle into d have index minus one so the um, of course in the case um, in the case of non-degenerate critical point each critical point gives a contribution of minus one so the the degree formula can be uh, written in a more precise form that says that uh, big M minus small m minus one equals the number of critical points. Counting with, in general, counting with multiplicity if the 
um, function is non degenerate is an exact multiplicity. So, since mm, we could show that uh, non degeneracy occurs for a generic choice, uh, in general, we will have this exact number of solutions big n minus small n minus one. Uh, so basically the number of solutions de depends on maximum and minima of h but also on the sign of the half version. in particular okay let us see some example so let us make this case where uh, i have h with all maxima and all minima at the same uh, height so say n plus one absolute maxima and n absolute minima here n equals three so at um, at absolute maxima, the um, the half regression is positive because they are absolute. At all minima, it is negative. So here, uh, so I remember only critical point with um, with positive half regression play a role. So small m is zero no minima play any role big m is n minus one because all maxima can be counted so here i have many solution i have n solution the the more critical the more up and down i make the, the more critical points i have this is the case okay here i made a particular choice of which, which is a very special choice all says made for maxima and for minima, but I can perturb this a little. Uh, and again, uh, this is strict inequality, so it is stable by perturbation. And again, uh, I have many critical points. Now, this one said is the bad case. If, we, if H is decreasing evenly, uh, I have n equal one so no no solutions but this can occur also in the case of no, no monotonicity so um, this could happen even if i have even if i perturb this picture by, by getting many um, critical points here i have here i have many uh, maxima and minima, but the, the height is similar. So the um, half Laplacian is, uh, has the um, same sign and I get cancellation. So again, in, in spite of having, of having many critical points, they do not produce any uh, solutions. Okay, now let us go back to the case of general curvatures um, so we are prescribing k0 plus epsilon k at the interior it's zero plus epsilon h at the boundary uh, here the um, the functional setting more, more or less works in the same way uh, there is only one technical point that is, we need to exclude a case, only one particular case, which is uh, uh, not quite uh, clear to us, right? We don't know if there is a geometric be meaning behind this, but there is this one case, k0 negative h0 equal 2 over square root of 3, where the, um, the argument doesn't work, basically because we have a a normal Laplacian in the linear um, operator, which needs zero average to be inverted. And at the first order, this can be done if this is different from zero. But apart from this particular strange case, uh, the, the functional setting holds true. Now the orthogonality condition is, um, equivalent to can be again written as the gradient of gamma equals zero but gamma is defined differently uh, 
Um, so we have a sum of two terms. The boundary term, okay, I wrote in in a more uh, in a shorter form, but it's the same guy as before. Plus, so a boundary integral plus there is an interior integral, the bubble versus the um, the interior curvature k. Again, we can compute the degree of gamma using a true first symptotic expansion. Here, the, the key role is, is played by the this function phi, which is an interpolation between uh, uh, k and h tilde. h tilde is a harmonic extension uh, of the prescribed curvature h on the upper half plane. So, um, so the previous case was k equals zero. So if k is equals zero, we only have h tilde. And in fact, in the expansion, we see the normal derivative of the harmonic essential, which is not normal to the reformulation, the half Laplacian of h. Here, in general, we will see um, this combination of the prescribed curvature and the um, the two prescribed curvatures. Um, the biggest difference is that um, gamma is not harmonic anymore, so we cannot repeat the um, the argument of exact multiplicity because okay, this guy is harmonic, but this guy K is can be whatever. So, um, but the argument is still working. Um, we basically need to the, the same uh, non-degeneracy condition and um, just my regularity behavior to get uh, a solution whenever big M minus small m is different from one which means that, um, which now means in, in big M, I'm counting the, the local maxima when the, no, the normal derivative of pi is positive and the same thing in small M, I'm counting the local minima with positive normal derivative of pi because pi plays basically the, the, same, uh, the, the same role as H did in the previous case. So if this difference is the if uh, this difference between big M and small M is not one, the degree is not zero, and we get existence of a solution. And um, and this is a a recent result with the Sergio Ruth Bart Cassandra Pistoia. There is um there is also a part on the higher dimensional uh, prescription of um, almost constant curvature, but uh, I will not talk about this. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.